I spent a week doing Etsy shop audits for my students in the Passive Income Academy. This was a bonus that I offered for the first students that joined the academy. So I was basically going through their shops and found ways that they could improve their shops um, to help them make more sales, to convert more. I want to talk about with you today some of the biggest mistakes that I found that my students were making and that I made as well in the past when I was starting my shop. So let's get started. So the first mistake is not updating the thumbnail to the new format that Etsy is using. So if you don't know, Etsy now is using like a squared format for the main thumbnail, which is like the first picture that the person's going to see of your product. And this was a mistake that I've seen in basically all the shop audits that I've done because this is a quite recent update but it's so important because the thumbnail is the first thing that your possible customer is going to see. I know this is very annoying, you have to go through and change all your thumbnails but what I've done on my shop, I just went through the my best sellers and the products that get the most views and I just fix those thumbnails so you can do that as well but it's really really important you don't want to have your product like cut off the image because it's the first thing that possible customers are gonna see and if it's cutting off that can turn people off second mistake that I've seen new shops doing and I totally understand because I was in this position before as well is having very few products like two products three products and i understand if you are just starting your shop uh, but try in the beginning to get as many products as you can because imagine you are going on like on etsy to buy something and you go on a shop that only has two products that automatically sends on your brain an information that that person maybe doesn't have a lot of uh, variations and it turns people off um, so try to get as many products as you can in the beginning and what I've done when I was starting my shop I challenged myself to create a notion template a week for two months I think was nearly two months and I managed to get a lot of products on my shop on this uh, doing this challenge because I wasn't like trying to do everything perfect and doing a challenge really helped me to just get things done and get it out there because otherwise I would just spend months in a template and never launch anything. So my rule was if a template is 90% done, the main databases are done, it's like pretty much done, I would list it and if I needed to tweak the template, I could always tweak that later on as well. Try to build inventory on your shop, maybe aim for at least nine products, I think is a good number. If you sell Notion templates or digital products, this makes uh, things so much easier because it's easy for you to just duplicate a template, create a different version, you can just change the covers or create a different style and it's another listing so you don't have to go and create something completely new so that's uh, one way that you can build your inventory all right the next thing that i've seen on pretty much 80 percent of uh, my etsy audits was uncohesive visuals and on Etsy, this is extremely important, especially for digital products, because they that's all they have to make their decision to make a purchase or not. So you need to invest time on making your shop look cohesive. So the mistakes that I've seen on Etsy, on these Etsy audits that I've done, it's basically like it, there's no cohesion, there's no flow, um, a visual flow in the shop. It's very hard to explain without showing. I don't want to show the, the, my students' shops. I don't want to expose them. But imagine you going on a shop and the cover, the banner of that shop, it's orange. And then the listings 
uh, all over the place like there's no there's no um how do i say this and then the listing images they don't match anything with the banner they don't match with the logo and it's not it doesn't look like they belong together they it doesn't look like they belong to the same shop so this is something that can turn people off on etsy because it when you have like co a cohesive shop like everything kind of works together and belongs together uh, and when i say that is using like similar colors and the same font that you are using on your banner try to use that on your listings or something similar so it kind of has like a flow and you're not gonna get this on the first time i change the banner of my shop many many times and every time that i change it does get better a little bit more so you have to keep improving and i actually got a question from one of my students about this uh, because she was struggling to create like her branding and everything i got started i didn't have the money to invest in a designer and i wanted to do all by myself so i went to pinterest and i created a mood board on how i wanted to look like like um like kind of the vibe that i wanted and that's why i use a lot of orange on my brand uh, that's how i decide the colors so many ways that you can work on that if you don't have a good eye for design or if you really struggle with this i would recommend you are buying a branding kit you can get this on etsy on creative market or you can ask a designer to do for you or you can just get like a branding kit on canva as well you need to start somewhere so don't try to be perfect it it's it takes time try to make it uh look trustworthy and uh, cohesive because that helps you to convert those visitors that come to your shop to actually buy from you and you can also get inspiration from other shops that you like the vibe it doesn't need to be necessarily the same product that you sell so you can get inspiration from anywhere and create your own branding and follow that throughout your shop on your banner on your listing images on your logo and that creates a cohesive flow for your shop all right the next thing is not having a subtitle on your shop this is very very easy to add if you go on the back end of your shop you can easily fix this the subheading the subtitle i don't know how is it called is basically the name that shows up below your shop name so you're gonna see your shop name and there is like a subheading so on that space try to add keywords and say exactly what you sell and if you already have a target audience you can also add in there as well so for example you can sell notion templates for business owners or you can sell you can say like notion templates for months make sure you add keywords because that also helps with your seo the last one is using keywords that have a very very low search volume and this is especially important if you don't use social media if you are relying on etsy's traffic if you are just expecting etsy to bring all your customers or your sales you need to use keywords that are actually being searched for so when i was doing these etsy shop audits i went through some of some products and i actually went um, on an SEO tool, I, I am using at the moment Marmalade, which is the one that I'm really enjoying now because it has like colors and it really helps me to understand the data more. For example, I did some research, some of the keywords that one, some of my students were using and the reason why they were not making sales or bringing getting views on their products was because those keywords they will not be searched for so i always uh, try to wait to get products and keywords that have at least 200 searches a month on etsy because that's a, a good number to start with and for all the etsy shop audits that I, i've done i gave my students like keywords opportunities so instead of using this keyword try to use this one instead because the thing that you need to think about is 
think about how the person would type on Etsy search to find your product. So sometimes we we just like write things as a robot and we need to think about humans like you are selling products to humans so you need to think about how they type the product name and that's the keyword that you should be using and that doesn't mean that you can't sell a product that has a uh, low search volume because this is just a guide this is just a guide for you but it, it's not 100% accurate so I listed products before they had very low search volume and then they turned out to be my best sellers and you know so you have to just test things what I do is I do a mix of both so I list products that I'm just excited about without doing research just because I created the products already or I want to list that product and I also create products more strategically I do research and see what's uh, available in the market and all that so I do a mix of both and it works so uh, nothing is guaranteed so you have to experiment but I hope this video helped if this video helped you in any way subscribe to the channel and I'll keep bringing more videos like this for you. So if you are ready to monetize your creativity and create your own line of Notion templates to sell, I am opening the Academy in January 2024 and I am so excited to share all about it with you. And I'm gonna leave all the details in the description. You can join the waitlist if you are interested. So I'll send you an email when it's open. So I open the Academy a few times a year. This is my program where I share the best things that I've learned so far selling Notion templates. I sold over 3000 Notion templates pretty much passively now because that's not even my focus anymore. And my templates, they just keep selling. I make sales every day. And if you want that for you as well, make sure you join the Academy. So in the Passive Income Academy, you also get access to a PLR template gallery, which is basically a gallery with some Notion templates that you can customize and resell as your own. So you have the commercial license and you have lifetime access to all uh, templates that are in there and the templates that I'm going to add in the future as well. Uh, we do monthly coaching calls, uh, co-working calls where you can ask your questions, share your challenges and um, talk with our Notion community. So if you want to join, make sure you join the waitlist. I would love to connect with you and meet you inside. So I'll see you on the next one.